Welcome to Speedy's Radio Repair. We fix with no tricks. Welcome to D-Lab. Today we're going to do a speedy repair on an RCA 3X533 radio made in 1954 housed in a beautiful dark green cabinet. So this radio was shipped to D-Lab by a fellow named Robert and he sent me a note. I'll read this to you. He said this radio is identical to one that belonged to my late aunt who died in 1978. It provided me years of enjoyment as a kid in the early 70s listening to stations that would skip hundreds of miles late at night. Pretty cool, huh? Would be a great link for those days to share with my girl's teenage son who has never seen anything like it. This means a tremendous amount to me and I can't thank you enough. Well, I'm going to do a great job for you, man. I'm sure it's a pretty basic repair. This is a five tube hot chassis radio. So you got to be kind of cautious when you're in there. So let's fire it up, see what the problem is. And I'm sure we can fix it relatively easy. So here she is, the little RCA Victor tabletop green machine, AM band only. So this is your tuning. And over here is your volume with the power switch. If I kind of flip him up on his back, you see the ID tag showing the model number. You've got the tubes, the 35W4, 12BE6, 12BA6, 12AV6, and a 60C5. And of course it does not have a power transformer. So around the back, still has the original back panel with the AM loop stick built in. So let's plug her in and see what's going on. I'm going to turn the volume all the way down. I'm just going to plug her in. See if there's any signs of life. Nothing yet. Gotta wait for those tubes to warm up. Ah, here she comes. Oh yeah, Home City. Obviously we got some bad filter caps. Let's get it apart. All right, to get these guys apart, it's pretty simple. You gotta pull the volume knob off. And you would think that you have to pull the tuning knob off, but you don't. You leave that in place. Flip him up. Take out this one hex head screw. The chassis is loose. And now you carefully pull the chassis back and it will disengage from the tuning knob. Just like that. Here she comes. So here's the top side. You can see the tubes. Got your variable tuning cap. AM loop stick antenna, built in speaker. Pretty clean. Let's get the bottom off, check those caps. So, this is kind of nice to actually have a bottom cover on the chassis. A lot of these radios don't have that, they're just open. So, this should help with a little bit of shielding, noise reduction, etc. There we go. There's the bottom side. It's all original. So you know the filter cap and definitely all these wax caps that are dripping got to go. So as you know, I just get in here and pull out those old caps and put in the fresh ones and move on. And a lot of you write in, hey, why don't you take a cap meter and check those caps and see which ones are bad? My response, why? It's an old radio. Those things are like 50, 60 years old, right? They got to be changed. I'm not going to waste my time checking them. If you want to, go ahead. But that's not how D-Lab operates. We'll start out by changing the main filter cap, which is a dual 50 at 150 volt cap. All right. So we'll get him out of there. Now I noticed when I pulled the cover, look, a little wax booger hanging out there. Obviously the drippage from the other wax caps. All right. Another good reason to get him out of there. So they got this little clippity doo da holding the cap in. If you want to reuse these wires for your new caps, just cut them off right there. Now you got some convenient leads. So my replacement filter caps will be two individual 68 microfarad at 400 volt caps. Put a little adhesive heat shrink over them to hold them in place. 
I'm going to put them right back into that old clip. So the new filter caps had to be laid down and glued to the chassis. This clip wouldn't hold them correctly. They are going vertical and they would have interfered with the replacement of the shielded cover. So I just went ahead and glued her down, got her all soldered up. Let's put some insulated knobs back on this thing since it is hot chassis. We don't want to touch it. Let's fire it up and see if the home's gone. I've got some plastic knobs on here. And as I said before, be very cautious. Turn this guy on. When you're working on these, because there is no transformer, so if you touch that chassis and touch a ground, let's say, on your test bench, you're going to get poked with about 150 volts. Okay? Look at there. Volume's down, no hum. Got some white noise. Can we receive a station? Ah. So she is receiving. It's not too many local stations in my area. But it's a really good sign. So now, unplug it. Let's change out those wax caps. We're about done. So we're going to change out these old drippity doos with these Panasonic type caps. These are rated at 630 volts. They're very inexpensive and a great cap to change these old guys with. Alright guys, you know the drill. We do one at a time so you don't lose track of what you're doing. So I'm going to get this guy dug out here first. Then I'll do this one and then that one. First new cap is reinstalled. You can see I simply clipped the leads off of the old caps and J hooked on the new ones. I'd recommend that you do that rather than trying to go back to the tube socket because sometimes these pins are fragile and if you put too much stress on them you'll break the tube pin and you'll be bummed out. Just make sure that you allow plenty of space here for insulating the leads so they can't short against anything. Old ones are out, new ones are in. Now I'm going to clean this control and the wiper arm on the tuning cap and we'll test again. So on the tuning caps there's a little brass tab here I'm going to hit those with a little bit of deoxit and then this back bearing surface. Work the cap. Should be as good as gold. Another check. Plug her in. Like I say, don't touch that chassis. Make sure it's still playing. There we go. another station. Lastly, I'm going to check all the tubes on my tube checker, make sure that they're all serviceable, and we're going to give this thing a bit of a cleanup. There's some dust from over the years, but that pretty much wraps up the speedy repair of the RCA radio. So in case you're wondering, yep, all the tubes check primo in the radio. All right, not too bad of a job. As you can see, if you have all the parts on hand, you should be able to do it in about an hour. Time for the next project. We'll see you again. So long.